Welcome back, everyone. We're diving into the world of AI agents today. Um, you know, what they are, how they work, their potential, all that good stuff. And our main source for this deep dive, it's a July 2024 IBM article titled, What Are AI Agents? You know, I think when a lot of people hear AI agent, they think, oh, it's just a chat bot, right? But it's actually a lot more than that. It's way more, yeah. It's like, if you think about it, like the difference between ordering a pizza online and then planning a whole vacation, yeah. ordering the pizza, that's simple, right? Yeah. But planning a vacation, you've got research, you got to coordinate flights, hotels, you know, all these moving parts. And that's really where these AI agents come in and that's where they excel. Exactly. They can actually access and use all these external tools like databases and even other AI agents mm -hmm. to get these really complex goals done. And they don't just do it randomly. They break these goals down into smaller steps, you know, figure out the best way to do each step and then actually take action. So like, let's say I want to plan a surfing vacation to Greece. Could an AI agent like research the best surfing spots for me? Maybe even check the weather conditions and suggest the ideal week to go based on like wave forecasts. Yeah, exactly. And all while you're just relaxing, sipping on your coffee. It's all about offloading those multi-step tasks, you know. To a system that can learn and adapt. Exactly. Now, the IBM article mentioned these three stages that the AI agent actually goes through. Uh, they call them goal initialization and planning, reasoning using available tools, and learning and reflection. Could you kind of walk us through those? Sure. So using that surfing vacation example, goal initialization, mm -hmm. that's basically you telling the AI agent, hey, I want to go surfing in Greece. Right. And then the AI agent takes that and breaks it down. You know, yeah. Finding the best serving spots, where to stay, flights, all of that. Mm -hmm. And even like your preferences, like do you want secluded beaches or maybe something else? Yeah, yeah. All of that goes into the initial planning. It's like having a super organized travel agent, but in your computer. So then what about the reasoning stage? What happens there? Okay, so that's when the AI agent really starts flexing his muscles, so to speak. It's using its tools, mm -hmm. right? So it might tap into a weather database. It might even use like a surfing specific AI agent for spot recommendations. Wow. Then you've got flight and hotel booking platforms all being used in sync to get those subtasks done. So it's not just planning, it's actually like doing the legwork for me. Exactly. Incredible. Okay, but what about the learning and reflection part? Does that mean that like each trip I plan, it gets smarter? That's exactly what it means. So say after your trip, you give some feedback, like, you know what, I actually prefer less crowded beaches. Mm. The AI agent remembers that for the next time around. It's constantly refining its understanding of your preferences. So it's not just a one-time interaction. It's like building a profile of what I like, and it improves over time. Mm. That's awesome. Now, the IBM article also talked about different types of AI agents. So, I mean, it's not all super-powered vacation planners, is it? No, not at all. There's actually a whole spectrum of AI agents out there, varying in complexity. At the simplest level, you have something called reflex agents. These yeah. operate based on preset rules. Okay. So think of a thermostat. It adjusts the temperature based on a schedule. Right. So it's reacting to very specific conditions without like complex thought. Exactly. Okay. But then from there, things get more advanced. Absolutely. Next up, you have model-based reflex agents. Now, these use memory to adapt to changes in their environment. Good example. Robot vacuum cleaners. You know, they remember which areas they've already cleaned. They avoid obstacles. So they're a bit more adaptable, but still kind of reactive in nature. Right. Okay. What comes next on this ladder of like AI agent sophistication? Then we get into the goal-based agents. These are the agents that can actually plan actions to achieve a specific goal, like your phone's navigation app, for example. You give it a destination and it figures out the best route to get you there. So it has a mission and it finds the best way to accomplish it. Exactly. Okay. But are there even more advanced types? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. We have the utility-based agents. They take things a step further. They try to optimize for a very specific outcome. Think of like a navigation app that not only gets you to your destination, but also prioritizes things like fuel efficiency or maybe avoiding tolls. So it's like making the best decision based on a lot of different factors. Right. Okay, okay. And at the very top, the most complex we have... The learning agents. Oh, okay. These are the rock stars. They constantly learn and improve from their experiences. Just like our vacation planning example earlier, e-commerce recommendation systems, another great example. The more you interact with them, the better they get at suggesting things you might like. That's such a wide range of capabilities. I mean, it's incredible. Now that we've gotten a good grasp of 
how they work, the different types. I'm really curious to see how these AI agents are actually being used in the real world, you know? Oh, absolutely. That's where things get really interesting mm -hmm. because we're seeing them pop up in so many different fields from customer experience to healthcare and beyond. Yeah. And the potential benefits must be just as diverse, right? Definitely. But like any powerful technology, there are also some potential risks and limitations that we need to keep in mind, right? I mean, we we got to approach all of this with a sense of responsibility and make sure that these AI agents are developed and deployed in a way that really benefits us, all of us. It really is amazing to think about all the potential applications for these AI agents. But I'm also thinking about the challenge, you know, the challenges involved in actually developing them because they need to be able to understand what we want. They need to interact with all these different systems and then they have to communicate their findings back to us in a way that we can understand. Yeah, that's a really important point. Communication. It really is key for AI agents to be effective, you know, truly effective. I mean, they almost have to be multilingual in a way, yeah. fluent in the languages of data, algorithms, but also human interaction. Right, right. But human language is so nuanced. I mean, we've got things like sarcasm, humor. How do you even begin to teach an AI agent to understand all of that? Well, that is definitely one of the biggest challenges in natural language processing. I mean, AI has come a long way, but it still struggles with those more subtle aspects of human communication. You know, imagine an AI agent trying to book a hotel room for you, and you say you want a room with a view. Well, it might end up overlooking a parking lot if it doesn't understand what we as humans typically find desirable, right? Yeah. So a lot of it comes down to context, understanding the unspoken parts of what we're trying to say. Exactly. But it's not just about understanding us, is it? I mean, they also need to be able to explain things back to us in a way that we can get. Oh, absolutely. Right. It's not enough for an AI agent to just, you know, spit out data or technical jargon. They have to translate that complex information yeah. into insights that we can actually grasp. So think data visualization, huh. clear summaries, maybe even a bit of storytelling to help us connect with that information. It's almost like they have to be good teachers, right? Like breaking down these complicated concepts into pieces we can digest. Exactly. And of course, good listeners, too, taking our feedback and adapting their approach. Yeah, I mean, the, the goal here is to create AI agents that feel more like partners, you know, or collaborators. Yeah. Not just robotic taskmasters. They need to be able to engage in a real dialogue. Yeah. Understand our needs, adjust their communication style. This makes me think about the future of work, you know. Uh -huh. If AI agents become really good at communication, how might that change the way we interact with technology in the workplace? Oh, oh that's a great question. I mean, imagine a world where AI agents act as these intermediaries between us and complex systems. So they could take technical jargon, translate it into plain language, summarize insights from tons of data, you know, even help us collaborate better across teams. So instead of spending hours, you know, digging through reports, we could have an AI agent that just gives us the key takeaways and suggests actions to take. Exactly. Freeing us up to focus on, you know, more strategic tasks. Right. It's all about using AI to augment our capabilities and create a more efficient and productive work environment. That would be amazing. But of course, we have to be mindful of the potential downsides too, right? Yeah. And make sure that AI agents are developed and used responsibly. Absolutely. I mean, things like making sure that they don't reinforce existing biases. Yeah. Or create new ones based on the data they're trained on. You know, it's important to think about all the ethical implications as this technology keeps advancing. It's not just about what they can do, but what they should do. Exactly. We need to make sure they're aligned with human values and used for the benefit of society, all of society. This deep dive, it's already given me so much to think about. I mean, it seems like AI agents have this incredible potential to revolutionize the way we interact with technology, but we need to be thoughtful, deliberate about how we go about developing and deploying them. I totally agree. It's exciting to be working in this field, you know, mm -hmm. but it's also a time for really careful consideration and ethical reflection. And speaking of exciting developments, I'm really eager to hear more about those real world applications that we talked about earlier. You know, I think seeing these AI agents in action will help us to really grasp their potential, but also the challenges that still need to be addressed. Okay, let's do it. We've talked about the theory, now let's dive into some real world examples. You know, see how they're actually making a difference in all these different industries. Okay, so real world examples, let's hear them. I know the IBM article mentioned customer experience. They said that's a big area where AI agents are already making a difference. Oh yeah, for sure. And we're seeing them go way beyond like those basic customer service chat bots. 
Yeah, yeah. the ones right. The ones you see on websites sometimes. Oh, yeah. AI agents are now being used to create these like much more personalized and engaging customer experiences. Can you give us an example of what that might actually look like in practice? Okay, so picture this. You've got a virtual assistant. Yeah. But it's not just answering basic questions about a product, mm -hmm. right? It's actually proactively helping you to troubleshoot, you know, if you have technical issues. Oh, okay. And it remembers your past interactions, your preferences, and then it can offer you personalized recommendations based on your history with that company. So it's like having like a dedicated customer service rep who just n knows me inside and out and is yeah. always there to help. Right. That would definitely make for a smoother customer experience. Yeah. For sure. What other applications are we seeing in this like customer facing kind of space? What well, we're seeing them being used to provide mental health support, believe it or not. So they can offer like personalized coping mechanisms, mm -hmm. track mood patterns, even connect users with, you know, human therapists if needed. That's amazing. It could make mental health resources way more accessible to a lot of people, you know, people mm -hmm. who maybe can't afford therapy or just don't have the time. Exactly. Okay. So what else? Are there other places where these AI agents are proving helpful in those customer facing roles? Yeah, definitely. I mean, they're even being used for things like interview simulations. What? Yeah. So an AI agent can actually help job seekers to practice their interview skills you know, receive feedback on their responses, get advice on how to improve their performance. That's wild. It's like having a personal interview coach right in your pocket. Right. Okay, so we've seen how they can really enhance customer experiences, but what about other industries? The IBM article also mentioned healthcare as a promising area for AI agents. Well, absolutely. Healthcare is, I think, ripe for disruption with AI agents. I mean, think about tasks like streamlining treatment plans mm -hmm. or managing medication. AI can play a big role there. Do you have any specific examples of how that's already happening? Yeah. So imagine this. You have an AI agent that can analyze a patient's medical history, identify potential drug interactions, and then help to generate a personalized treatment plan tailored to their specific needs and preferences. So it's like having this whole team of doctors and pharmacists working together behind the scenes, yeah. making sure each patient gets the absolute best care possible. Exactly. Amazing. What other ways are we seeing AI agents used in healthcare? Well, they can also help patients manage their medication schedules. So sending reminders, answering questions about side effects, and even like flagging any concerns to the healthcare provider. That's so helpful, especially because, you know, remembering to take medication correctly can be such a challenge for people. It is, yeah. Okay, so it seems like the potential benefits in healthcare are huge, but are there other areas within healthcare where AI agents are being explored? Oh yeah, there's a ton of really cool research happening right now mm -hmm. in areas like disease diagnosis, even drug discovery. AI agents are being trained on these massive data sets of medical information. And they're starting to identify patterns that you know humans might miss. Yeah. So this could lead to earlier and more accurate diagnoses, mm -hmm. potentially even faster development of new treatments. So it really sounds like AI agents have the potential to like completely revolutionize how we approach healthcare as we know it. And it's incredible to think about the possibilities. But it also, I don't know, it makes me think that we have to be so careful, so thoughtful about how we actually integrate this kind of tech into, you know, such a sensitive field. Oh, for sure. Transparency, accountability, and, you know, having that human oversight, all of that is so crucial. Yeah. Especially in healthcare. Absolutely. Well, this deep dive has been amazing. It's really opened my eyes to the potential of AI agents. I mean, from enhancing customer experiences to, like you said, potentially transforming healthcare, it's clear that this technology can change the world in some pretty profound ways. It really is an exciting time to be, you know, witnessing this whole technological revolution unfold. It is. But it's also a time, like we've been saying, for careful consideration. You know, yeah. we need to be asking ourselves not just what can AI agents do, but what should they do? Yeah. What are the ethical implications? How do we make sure that they're used to benefit everyone, not just a select few? All very important questions as we continue to push the boundaries of AI. So to our listeners, I'll leave you with this. As these AI agents become more common in our lives, what role do you see them playing in your life? How will you interact with them? And what impact do you hope they'll have on your world? It's a lot to think about for sure. But that's what these deep dives are all about. So thank you for joining us. And we'll be back soon with another exploration into this fascinating world of knowledge and technology.